it was nice when I was walk, walking through the, the hall of puzzle. There was some system engineers hacking dagger pipelines. They're uh, writing Python, so uh, they're also writing their pipeline in Python. So they started, they did uh, the quick start and then went off to, to write some basic pipelines. And then we thought, oh, I can help, but I don't have any Python installed. I don't have, when I have Python, then it's not the right version. And they don't have all the tools that they use to develop their application. But the good thing is, is, uh, is Dagger. I just can uh, join in. And we thought I'm going to build them some new test function. And uh, I thought we'll do some remote end-to-end -end testing for their application containers. <clears throat> so with, with uh, the demo, I will show you or try to. Uh, demo gods, please. I can show you some of the powers of, of Dagger. So I can build and test apps locally without installing all the tools. I can develop the pipeline the same language as the application is developed. And I can just develop the pipeline on my laptop and then push to CI. So the application is just a small microservice it's written in Python, and uh, they're just prepared for other, or it's a template that we then can re reuse, and it's just um, providing some endpoints. So we have just a small file. We see here this a fast API. There's some endpoints. Uh, can list some items or have the health checks already available. So. To run the end-to-end -end test, we have to build the application, put it into a container, run it, then make the service um, available from our test, and then execute also the tests. Also, I'd like to show you, we have a Docker file used for building the application, so you can run it or test it also locally. It's a multi-stage build, building the application, and then creating runtime container, just containing the application. So what I did for preparation, I just went to the docs from Dagger. I did the uh, installation of the Dagger CLI. And with that, I have all set up for me. And I got here the repository. Normally, when you start your pipeline, then you're going to init a Dagger module. So we go Dagger IO on the docs. At the quick start, you can here just install your Dagger CLI, Mac OS, Linux, Windows. You just switch tabs. And the first interesting thing is to daggerize your application. There's also a demo you can use. And then for your language that you're going to write the pi pipeline in, you have uh, different initializations here. So for Python, I just do the dagger init dash dash SDK Python. Then I have my pipeline available. So every pipeline is also a dagger module. But writing pipelines uh, doesn't matter. You don't have to pu publish everything, but it's all as a module. So you can have your functions there and use them. This was also what my colleagues uh, from sys system engineering did. So we have here in our repository a Dagger JSON. The Dagger JSON um, has some information about the engine, where are my pipeline files stored. So I see the source is the, in the CI directory. And here inside the CI directory, there's my Dagger module with an initial pipeline. So there was some coding done before. We have some functions like building a container. And here we see 
it's um, using the Dagger API, but it's almost the same as when you have a Docker file. It's uh, the commands are the same. Or we can build the app container. This will then use the Docker file that I showed shortly, and it will build the container based on that Docker file. Then we see that they implemented Python Lint, so they can lint their source code and also Python test to run tests which were implemented here in the test folder. For me, when I start, I'm just going to check if everything works. And that's normal. I just do attacker functions. It will compile the mod module, generate, generate all the needed things. And we see here the method that I mentioned. So what we saw before from Jeremy, he uh, tried also to run different functions, starting containers, and to see what we can do all is a container. So I'll just do a Dagger call build container. And we see here we have a container that we can use to build our application. We can chain those functions here with the CLI. And let's say I'd like to see the output that's coming from there. So we see it's just normal container build. So we can do this here, but we're not here to hack some bash. We're going to write some code. So for that, we are here. What I'm going to do, we have here the nicely Python test method um, that runs Python test. That's all included with a test library. But we'll just uh, try that one. So we call our, our PyTest test method. We have to provide also the source, uh, give the local directory. And then I have to add, give the path to the test. So we have here our API test. I just call that function that was prepared before. And hopefully, everything runs. We have some warnings that's something for the system engineers to fix. But we have our two tests which run through. What I now going to help is this to run my end-to-end -end test. And we see here, we do a request. And we need to have something uh, on our network that we can connect to. So I have to build the application container, start it, have it as a service. And then we can run our tests against this one. And I just give my remote test Python file. We see errors, and it's a connection error because we don't have the application started before. So this one was expected. There are really um, nice examples here on the docs. So I say, how can I run a container as a service? Jeremy also showed that in, in his demo. And here we have, uh, in the quick start, build the application also some um, documentation that you can do it by yourself. So I said, OK, I'm going to also do that with my application. So I do call the app container method. Then I will also give in the source. And as we saw before, I'll start it as a service. I start it. I give the ports. We have here uh, 5,000 because the application Just runs missing from a, uh, missing a letter C. Port 5,000. So we have the application started up. We go to the um, second terminal and we do call port 5000. And we see that's just the hello world from our Python application that we just built and started. So again, this is just uh, testing it over the CLI. So when I 
like to call from a function a container as a service. We also have here nice documentation, bind services in functions. I'll also go to Python example. And we see here that we do the same as we do with the CLI. We have here um, as a service at the end. So we will get the running app as a service. And then with the other function, we can just do a service binding so that we can connect to this application. And this is the same that now we're going to do to test our application with end-to-end -end tests. So when we got the example from the documentation, I prepared this one. So we have now the app as a service, a new function. We see for building the app container, we need the source. So I get here the source parameters, and we just call the app container build method and then start, start it as a service. So when we have new functions here, I'll just test is everything good. And we should then see our new app as a service function. Good. We have our function uh, that we can use then to do our end-to-end -end tests. So I think I'll just do some copy-paste as usual. We take our normal test function. And I say at like to have end to end. So um, the path, I'm gonna give in the path directly to my file so I don't have to call it every time when I use the method. We have here our end to end function, just switch to the other test file. And before we execute the test, we have to, to add the service binding. We add the service binding, I call it up. And then we're going to call the app as a service function so that we have our application as a service. So the app as a service needs also the source. And hopefully, I have everything. So we have our end-to-end -end function here. And we're going to try this one on, out. We call the function, and we have to give in the source. And let's run. So the first time, it mostly takes some uh, more time. But now we see here, we have one passed function. So we had the application started. We have our tests that call and we expect the hello world as we tested it locally before. When we run it again, we hope that the caching comes in and the tests are executed much faster. So this one works here on my machine. So I ho also hope that we can push this one to CI. We here already have small integration. We have a template here at Puzzle that we can run Dagger. So I'd say I'll have a, some more test methods. Then to end test, we have here the, at the same stage test. And I'll just get here my command, how I run it locally. I can add it here. So we'll commit everything. And we'll push. We hope that the pipeline is going to start. We see we have in our stage two jobs, the test and the end-to-end -end test. <coughs> they get started. And we hope that they run through the same as they run through at, on my computer. OK, great. So we have here the same one test passed. So 
can really develop everything locally, push it to CI and it will run the same.